Whenever we discuss the idea of Xbox versus PlayStation versus Nintendo, these companies are just in such different positions. Obviously, Microsoft is very dead set on the idea of subscription models. Nintendo is trying to make the biggest games for the lowest cost, trying to make games that may not be graphically impressive, but are certainly fun to play. And Sony is going for the big budget AAA Hollywood style games, stuff that costs hundreds of millions of dollars, but are big cinemagraphic experiences, which I don't even think is a word, but I think this battle, this console rivalry, has been incredibly fascinating to watch it unfold, but people are kind of wondering what comes next. How is this industry going to evolve for the rest of the PlayStation 5, the PlayStation 6, the new Nintendo Switch? I mean, things are definitely about to change. Well, the CEO of Sony did an in-depth interview sort of discussing the nature of the industry as it currently exists and the future of the PlayStation games we love, and I want to kind of talk about that. Let's get into it. Hi, hope you're having a great day. I'm Dreamcast Guy. If you can like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. So this video is going to end with a very personal message. Uh, if you just want to hear about video games, that's here. But, you know, watch to the conclusion if you want to hear something uh, kind of heavy. But let's get into this. So this is the CEO of Sony. Yoshida, and he made this statement about gaming subscription models, which we can kind of reach between the lines. He's talking about Game Pass. Very obviously, that is the most direct competitor to the PlayStation is Xbox. And so here he says this, people usually play one game at a time. So an all-you-can-eat type of minigames may not be so valuable compared with video game streaming services. We have a balanced hybrid service on PlayStation Network, subscription, as well as pay per content. So he's essentially trying to say that, hey, Game Pass works for some people, or you know, the same way that some people enjoy other streaming services, like, I don't know, things like Ubisoft Plus, where you can download and play older Ubisoft games free easily. But he's essentially saying, PlayStation isn't going to go down that route because for us, we just don't think it's as successful for the gamers. Now, somebody even posted this interesting translation where they're basically saying, look, this is a hybrid service. So what we're going to do is we'll take your monthly fee for PlayStation Plus Premium. We'll give you retro games. We'll give you new releases here and there like indie stuff. Sea of Stars obviously was day one on both Game Pass and it was also day one on PlayStation Plus. But you know what? If we actually have it as this loosey-goosey concept, we don't mind taking stuff out of the service as well as selling you $70 games. It seems like Sony is trying to have their cake and eat it too. They'll charge you a subscription fee as high as they can get away with on top of the full-priced games that they're cranking out. Now, this interview is interesting because they very much doubled down on the idea that more PlayStation games are coming to stuff that isn't PlayStation. Maybe even things like mobile, cloud gaming, PC gaming. To me, as a person with a very powerful gaming PC, I'm pretty in favor of this. Uh, I do think that my one complaint with all these PlayStation games coming to PC is we still don't have trophy support. Like, personally, I want some sort of PlayStation launcher, the way that we have like a Blizzard launcher and a Riot launcher and stuff like that. Rockstar Games has the launcher. I, I would love an idea to basically boot up PlayStation games on my PC and they still work with my PlayStation account. They still let me pop trophies and unlock stuff, especially if it had some cloud saves where I could pass things back and forth. Look, Xbox doesn't always have the games I like most, not the biggest Starfield fan, and Redfall was definitely a dumpster fire, but I definitely love the fact that the games I play on my Xbox immediately sync with my Xbox PC account. It passes the saves back and forth. I mean, it's a extremely good system that's not just fluid, it's easy, which as a dumbass, I really enjoy. But 
people are actually discussing this because we're in an interesting spot with the industry itself. Subscription growth has flatlined. No new people are basically buying into this. Now, now, maybe that term doesn't make sense to you, but essentially no people are buying into Game Pass that have not already had Game Pass. There isn't this huge flush of fresh audiences subscribing to stuff. And that goes for PlayStation Plus as well. If you have PlayStation Plus, there's a good chance you've had it for a long time. There isn't this huge chunk of new console buyers getting these subscription models. So now we're in this weird spot where if you're trying to purely monetize a subscription model, like if you're trying to make as many billions of dollars as possible on Game Pass, there is a ceiling. And I think that ceiling is lower than some people probably predicted. Now, there is some expectations, there is some uh, little bit of analysis that perhaps about 33 million people do have Xbox Game Pass. And I mean, there's no denying the fact that Microsoft is literally the most valuable company in the world. So even if Game Pass isn't as profitable as they probably hope, they can certainly foot the bill to keep those games going. I just think it's interesting that Xbox, I think, is not necessarily going to go third party, but they're going to start putting their games on PlayStation. Stuff like Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves are rumored to be coming soon. This is interesting to me because when I hear these tweets, when I hear this talk about PlayStation, PlayStation and Sony in general has been so obsessed with the walled garden approach. They've been doing this now for about 12 years, which is that instead of branching out, instead of putting their products onto the rival consoles, as much as possible, they just try and build their barriers and keep you in. They want PlayStation gamers to buy PlayStation games and get PlayStation Plus. Whereas Nintendo, they don't mind if you own other systems. Xbox doesn't care if you play it on a PC or your cell phone while taking the squirtiest Taco Bell dump possible. It's just about having Game Pass. PlayStation, I guess I'm curious to see how this shakes out for the rest of the PlayStation 5 generation. Like, can they stay profitable with games that are so expensive in this current climate? People are discussing the idea of the industry bubble bursting. There has been a massive amount of layoffs. If you've not been paying attention, pretty much every single studio that's at least even decently sized is doing mass firings. They just fired 11% of Riot Games, which is League of Legends and Valorant. This is one of the most profitable companies, and they are mass firing people. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because we're in this spot where I do think that people invested a lot in video games during 2020 and 2021. A lot of these trillion dollar investment groups and mega billion dollar donors and stuff like that tried to make more live service games, more battle passes, more subscription models, and a lot of those have not panned out. This is my current frame of mind when it comes to the future of PlayStation, and specifically the rest of the PS5 generation, is that I hope they keep their eyes on the ball. I hope they keep making big AAA releases that are fun, maybe some remakes, maybe some AA stuff, maybe a Bloodborne remaster, but they don't just chase that infinite cash cow. Sony has talked about the fact that they want to make as many live service games as possible, and to me this seems like a very bad move. I think that what will actually do them best is if they just keep making the games that have already been paying their bills. Uncharted, Horizon, God of War, like stick with what you know. I'm not saying don't experiment, I'm just saying don't chase that Game Pass money because I think it's just a very different audience. But uh, clearly Sony knows that. Their detrimental statements towards the current state of subscription models, clearly they're not going all in on that. I just, hmm, PlayStation, I wanna see them grow. And in the current climate, I'm curious what that's going to take. I mean, it's not like their games can become more expensive. It's not like their games could become even more huge. I, I don't know. 
give us more Days Gone. Give us more incredibly unique awesomeness like Ghost of Tsushima. Go outside the box, but obviously don't break the box in the process. I don't know. These have just been some off-the-cuff thoughts thinking about this because it is interesting to consider the fact that PlayStation is something that makes subscription model money but isn't ever going to jump in with both feet the way that Microsoft has. But what do you guys think about this? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And please keep dreaming. Uh, okay, so personal statement here. Uh, yesterday, I talked about my mom passing away. Uh, just mentioned it. I got so many uh, messages and comments and, and, and just honestly, really, really good advice. Uh, just incredibly powerful stuff. Uh, this grief has been complicated. Uh, my mom and I didn't really you know, get along the last 20 years and a lot of really interesting insights. So I just wanted to say, I appreciate it. The, uh, you know, I kind of get myself out on camera. So I appreciate the fact that you guys are able to connect and, and help me as well. I, I can say genuinely from the bottom of my heart that, that y'all's words have helped me and I appreciate that. So thank you guys and please keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.